I'm still going to have a good week. As long as the Eagles lose, I'm still going to have a good week. Everybody loses, I'm still having a good week. Because we still in it by one game. God damn it. Jason fucking Garrett. Seriously? Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Exactly. We actually had a good team. What? How do you fucking call plays? I don't want to fuck. I don't get this. Jason Garrett, you want to say Jason Garrett? How do you fucking call plays? I'm over there, friend. I'm over here. Oh, get out of here. Well, good Christmas morning, friends, and a Merry Christmas to you. Mark Marcom's here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So, here we are Christmas morning, and I hope you have a merry, merry Christmas. It's not the Christmas morning that we Cowboy fans wanted to have. Unfortunately, it is the one that we do have, and... We played good enough to have a victory. We just could not find a way to have a victory. And this is where, you know, as in the game of, uh, as in the, on any given Sunday, the inches we need are all around us. The problem is, is you miss a play here, you miss a thing there, you miscalculate on this one or that one and the other one, and those little things add up to a loss. Dak Prescott played well enough to win. But the questions we have right now is, and, and here's where we have problems. We have uh, the biggest problems we have. Right now, it's the offensive line. The offensive line, unfortunately, being shorthanded, having Zach Martin uh, nicked up with the thigh bruise, Tyron Smith not being there, and Igota playing left tackle definitely hurt the Dallas Cowboys. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, the difference of having Tyron Smith when he's healthy, and I know so many people are always like, you know, why we got Tyron Smith? We need to get rid of him. He's a liability, yada, yada, yada. Well, here's the reality is, you see the value of having Tyron Smith, even if you don't have him all the time, is he is a difference maker. You don't have to worry about the edge. You saw how bad it was with Agoda. And this is the question that I have is understanding that you know that Agoda is not Tyron Smith. Is you have to either game plan to help him keeping it a tight end, keeping the running back to help chip, doing something extra, putting an extra body on him. Or I know that Tyler Smith has played basically at an all pro level at guard. You have to look at this and say, I need the guys to be in the best position possible. You may have to look at taking um, Tyler Smith and kicking him at tackle and putting a go to who has actually played well at guard at guard until you get Tyron Smith. The bigger question will be is, is this back flare up a one week thing? Is it a two week thing? Is this something we look at and say, you're going to be off the next two weeks, Tyron Smith, just to get you as healthy as possible for the playoffs and go from there. In fact, I will dare say if the Eagles win today, maybe you look at this and say, chances are they're not going to lose to the Cardinals or the Giants. And maybe you sit here and you make plans for being healthy as possible going into the playoffs um, that will really dictate what happens if the Eagles go out and they look like some ass then you really need to fight for these next two games and we'll talk about that a little bit later that's problem number one the next problem you have is why did the Dallas Cowboys for two quarters go away from their playmaker you have to understand, C.D. Lamb is about to break all the Dallas Cowboys records. Um, I think he's only two catches maybe away or um, from the single-season catch record. Um, he's not far away yardage-wise of breaking Michael Irvin's yardage in the season record. He is the ultimate weapon for the Dallas Cowboys. And for whatever reason, the second and third quarter, they just did not use him. You saw him going back to more of Michael Gallup. And this is no disrespect against Michael Gallup, but it seems like bad things typically have been coming around and happening when Michael Gallup is getting the ball. Um, it's just coincidence, but it's just seeming to happen. And you needed to get the ball into C.D. Lamb's hands more times than not. The next problem, the run stopping. 
We did much better yesterday than we did the week before, but Hankins is truly missed. Hankins, we need to get him back and healthy. The good news is, is they think that he will be ready to start the playoffs, but you can see the difference of him being in there and being the guy to stop him. You know, people will look at it and say, maybe we wasted the pick on Mozzie. Maybe we should have gone offensive line instead of Mozzie Smith because Mozzie, we haven't gotten enough out of him right now to justify the help right now. And that's not to say that Mozzie Smith isn't going to be a, a player down the road, but you have to look at it from the immediate need and so on. And we're, you know, we're having a little discussion this morning on my, um, uh, a message line where I got game time and DMV and everything else about where we should have gone in the draft. And right now, offensive line, of course, is definitely the need. And Mozzie did not play bad. I saw him taking on some double teams and getting some penetration and things out there. It was not awful. Now, it wasn't like Big Hank, but definitely wasn't where we needed it to be. Um, and we still need to be able to run the ball better, but all of that also goes back to being in the position of having a lead, also having the offensive line healthy. And so you start looking at this and saying, could we have won this game? We certainly could have won this game. Mistakes always kill you, and the difference in this game, I hate to say it, and I don't want to put it on a rookie, but that fumble that happened early in the game was truly a game changer that not in a good way for us. So you get that touchdown, everything is a lot different um, for our team. It's a hell of a lot different for our team if we ended up getting um, if we end up getting that uh, touchdown from Hunter Lipke. Unfortunately, we, we didn't get it, and it is what it is. That's the reality of football. You know, a play here and a play there can make all the difference in the world. And unfortunately, we weren't the ones that were making the plays. Now, I feel better that at least the Cowboys got up off the mat from where they were last week. Last week was about as abysmal as it gets in a game. Um, this one, you have to look and say, with Tariq Hill, who was having a game coming off an injury, and Tariq Hill being one of the highest scoring offenses, that you held him to 22 points. We just have to do better than where we are, and we need to get players back. Um, I'm going to be getting out of here and heading home for the rest of Christmas. And now what we have to hope for is we've got to hope for the power of Rashid and hope that the Eagles lose. Now, we're in the playoffs. And everything from this point forward needs to be being the best team we can be come playoffs. And like I said, how the Eagles play is definitely going to dictate what we do going forward. The final piece of this is, and we have no control, is the referees seem to have a vendetta against the Dallas Cowboys. There is no way in the world that you can go almost nine games and not call a single holding call with Micah Parsons. Nine games. And at this point, it has set a message to teams that you can hold Micah Parsons and get away with it. You have a better chance of holding and getting away with it than actually being called on it because they just don't call. I have my own personal thoughts on why this is, and I'll be sharing that stuff with you guys a little bit later on another video, but um, I've got to get ready to get out of here, and so I want to take care of that business. Um, I have not seen this this morning from Get Up, but I'm sure they're going to be lambasting the Cowboys, so let's get a taste of our medicine, and hopefully y'all will have a Merry Christmas. Want everybody one that sucks, but... Um Definitely took a step, I guess you can say, from obviously last week's game, getting some points, um, playing a hell of a team uh, here on the road. It sucks. We hate to lose. Nobody's taking any more victories from this. Number one is a juggernaut game. we got to play better than we did today because, you know, you, you have to play above it on the road. And, um, you know, road warriors we will be.
We'll explain a little <laughs> later th th that very likely will be Road Warriors, very likely would have been whether they won yesterday or not. We'll get into the actual consequences of the game, but let's start with my favorite question. Was yesterday for the Cowboys a bad game or a bad sign? Bad sign. Listen, when Dak Prescott takes this yeah. hour and a half long drive down, they take the lead. You have the lead. Your defense can't be any fresher. Yeah. Fourth quarter, they can't be any fresher. It's time to close the game out. Micah Parsons, Armstrong, you name it. Go all the way across the board. Somebody's got to close this game out. Doesn't happen. Miami drives it all the way down. You saw it. Closes out on that two-yard run yeah. to get it to be able to wind the whole thing down. They got to figure – when it's a must-have, they don't have it, and that's the problem. Greeny, also, too, I want you to do the same thing you were doing for Josh Allen yeah. a few weeks ago. You were jumping around. You were doing memorandums. <laughs> what's, what's the word? Down barrel. Yeah, down right? barrel. Everything you could possibly do to say yeah. that Josh Allen did all he could to Preach. beat the Philadelphia Eagles, that's what you should be doing for Dak Prescott. Yes. That drive was his MVP drive, yes. as Jeff already said. And when you look at what Dak was able to do in that moment to put a team up that's supposed to be best defensively yeah. when they have a lead. This was supposed to be a team that was built like Jeff's old coach, right? We're going to get up on teams and we're going to rush the passer right. and you will be suffocated. The Dallas Cowboys didn't do that. And to me, the most disappointing part of that drive is those last two runs, everybody in America no. knows that the Miami Dolphins are going to run the football. And the know. Dallas Cowboys couldn't stop it. That's a problem. Absolutely. When a team can impose their will on you the way that the Miami Dolphins back. did in that moment, that's an issue. That's an issue that lasts in the playoffs. That's an issue that doesn't allow you to be a road warrior. And the thing you take away from these two games is offensively you did everything that you were supposed to do. You found a way to get right after a loss. Defensively, you did not. Yep. And so going into the next week, going into the playoffs, there are still question marks about this team. And truly, they're the same old Dallas Cowboys. We spent oh. the entire offseason talking about how they'd be different, that they'd be a physical run team, yeah. that they'd be a team on defense that could get stops when it mattered. No, they're not. They're a team that camouflages that at home by blowing out teams they can bully. But so far on the road against good football teams, we haven't seen them come through. I, I agree with you completely. Let, let's focus in more on that defense and not getting that stop. Rex is usually with us on Mondays. Yeah. And he would be Ooh. losing his mind losing today. It. You want to say you're a great defense? Well, those aren't the 85 Bears. Rex would say that for sure. Right. One stop. One play. Aaron Andrews is talking about Demarcus Lawrence came out like, you know, with his head on fire. Yeah. And you could see the intensity on their faces. Yeah. They need to make one play to yeah. win the yeah, game, so, so, and they can't do so it. So you needed to make one play. You know, Eric, I don't know if we have the tape of the yeah. Tyreek Hill play. We have but, it. But if you look at early on in this game, right, we were looking at playing zone because they didn't want to take the top off of the defense. And so we saw Tyreek Hill in cover two. He's able to find a spot. Yep. We saw Tyreek Hill. He was in quarters, and he got a spot. So here, right, you're going to see early on in the game. This is not what the Dallas Cowboys do. They're going to play a cover two defense, so they're sitting in too high. They're going to allow Tyreek Hill to get an intermediate route. Why? Because at this point of the game, we understand it's about keeping the top on the defense. You're going to see later on in the game, they're going to go to a quarters coverage. Tyreek Hill is going to sit it down in between Deron Bland and also in between uh, Wilson. Why is he doing this? Donovan Wilson is going to be inside. Tyreek Hill is going to find a way to get there and make a catch. What happens when, it, when, when, when it's, when it's cr crucial time, right? Yeah. What happens when it's a critical football moment? You go to man to man. So right now, Tua Tonga Valoa is telling Tyreek Hill, I need I need you to move. I need you to get in motion. And as he gets in motion, let's watch Jordan Lewis come with him. Jeff knows this signifies man to man. Yep. The first thing you're going to think is sprint out. So when he's thinking sprint out now, you're going to think, Jordan Lewis, I need to get over the top of Stephon Gilmore. Now we have a cluster fluff right here, which is going to allow <laughs> Cotton to fluff. get out, seal Jordan Lewis, and Tyree Kill gets yep. inside for the first down. Mike McDaniel understood that no matter what they decided to do the entire day defensively, that when it mattered most, the Dallas Cowboys would revert back to who they were, and he put a play with a motion and a finish that could take advantage of that. That is so well done, and mm. quite a risque choice of words there, but you made it work. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I got nervous for you. Yeah, I got nervous too. for you. But, but so, again... 
at the bottom line of it is this, and the explanation is outstanding in whether they're getting a little bit fooled, and maybe that goes to Mike McDaniel being just an outstanding offensive mm. mind, all the rest of that. Someone just needs to make one play. This is supposed to be a team that is led by its defense. It's supposed to have Micah Parsons, who's yeah. the most dominating individual Lawrence defensive the player edge. in yeah. the sport. Why can't they make yeah. the one play? That's the question they're asking themselves this morning, right? Because if you yeah. look at it, you talk about my old teams, right? When you got the yeah. lead, you pinned your ears back. They got five who can do it not just two they got five dudes who can go rush the passer right but for some reason when it's time to close out they aren't to be found and whether it's third and two to this hill when he goes man to man it's the easiest block in the business right the, yeah. the lineman's gonna go up chip a guy they're gonna go get the first down but the conversions that they're getting to extend drives depletes this defense and you saw as that dr a drive was going on you saw them beginning to look at each other man who's mm. gonna be the guy to make base? who is gonna be the guy who's and that has guy? to be the question right when you when you don't know who the guy that's gonna answer it everybody looks to someone else to make the play and nobody's stepping up and, and, doing and it. the other thing is this too look at what the Dow the, the Miami Dolphins did they didn't drop to a tongue of our lower back. No. They got the football out of Quit. his hands. Yeah. They made the Dallas Cowboys become pursuers, not attackers. That's right. They made them react. And so that's Mike McDaniel understanding what he's facing in Dan Quinn's defense. We is. saw them close out again. There we go. That's enough pain for this morning. But in reality, here's the thing that's kind of crazy is, you know, the run defense didn't play horrible. Last week, we gave up 266 yards, 266 yards on the ground. Yesterday, we only gave up 91. It was just, at the crucial time, we couldn't stop it. We could not make a play to finish off the game. And unfortunately, we go home with the L. All right, good people. Have a Merry Christmas. We'll be seeing you uh, for the Eagles game this evening. And... Let's hope, let's hope that we can find a way with the New York Giants for the Eagles to lose. Eagles lose, I'm still going to have a good week. As long as the Eagles lose, I'm still going to have a good week. Everybody loses, I'm still having a good week because we're still in it by one game. God damn it. Jason fucking Garrett. Seriously? Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Exactly. But we actually had a good team. What? Oh, now you, now you want to see, see the shit now. When he with y'all. When we were dealing with it all this damn time. How do you fucking call he plays? How in the fucking. I don't get this. No, but Jason Garrett.